In the video today, we're gonna learn about all the different ways that you can change the speed of your clips in Premiere Pro. How to speed up, slow down, maybe even freeze the video. Or if you wanted to, you could reverse all of that. I'm gonna show you how to do all of these techniques, make them look even smoother with a little thing I like to call speed rip. While I don't have time to showcase to you all the intricacies of how to shoot slow-mo footage properly, I can give you two major rules of thumb to follow that will make it look better in post. Number one, film at a high frame rate or high FPS. Let's take one second for example. A common frame rate here would be 24 frames per second. Most cameras these days can do 60 frames or 120 frames per second. So if you were to slow that down by 20 or 40%, that means you would get out of that one second, 2.5 or five seconds even. To put this into practice, let's say my phase is the like button. And here's you smashing it at 120 frames per second, 60 frames per second. That was a good one. <laughs> and 24 <laughs> frames per second. The second rule of thumb is to always set your shutter speed to the two times the amount of your frame rate. So when you're filming at normal speed of 24 frames per second, the closest that you can get in most cameras in the US at least is one over 50. If you were to go above that to say one over 200, then it will look really jittery. And if you go below one over 50, then it will get a whole bunch of motion blur and look dreamy almost. These same things apply to if you don't set the correct shutter speed to slow motion. So for a frame rate of something like 120 frames per second, the closest shutter that you can get in most cameras, at least in the US, is one over 250. If you go below that, you're gonna get too much motion blur when you slow the footage down. As you can see right here with the ball on the left as compared to the ball on the right that was filmed at the proper shutter speed. Double the amount of your shutter to frame rate. Now that we've covered the basics of wanting to film at a higher frame rate and the proper shutter speed to match that frame rate, let's go ahead and hop into Premiere Pro. The easiest way to manipulate the speed of a clip is to highlight it and hit Command R on Mac or Control R on Windows. Alternatively, you could right click and go to speed duration to also bring up that same window, but I'm a big fan of using hotkeys to make everything faster, so I'm gonna stick with Command R. You can change the clip duration by percentage. If you wanna get faster, you go above 100%. If you wanna get slower, you can go below 100%. If you ever wanna figure out what the slowest percentage is that you can slow down a clip to, all you have to do is remember this formula. Take the frame rate of what your sequence is at and divide that by whatever the clip frame rate is, and that will give you the percentage. Or in other words, the frame rate that you want divided by the frame rate that you have will equal the percentage. For example, my sequence is at 24 frames per second or 23.976 for those of you really keeping track. Divide that by my clip's frame rate, which is 120 frames per second, and that will equal a percentage of 20%. Effectively making 20% the slowest I can make the clip without any skipped frames or any duplicated frames. For example, if I change this to 10%, you can tell that with my 120 frame per second clip, as I step through the footage, it duplicates every other frame. Here are some of the most common slow-mo percentages that you'll see. And if you don't wanna take the time to do the formula yourself, I actually made a slow-mo percentage cheat sheet available for PDF download for free in the description below. There's also a completely different method to convert your footage to slow motion called interpreting footage. And I'll cover that later on, but let's continue looking at the speed and duration window. If manipulating a clip by percentage isn't your cup of tea, you could do it by a specific duration. This stands for hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. This is great for speeding up really long time lapses to a specific duration. So let's say I wanted to post this time lapse of me setting up for this video shoot on Instagram, and I wanted it to be exactly a minute long. So I'm gonna hit zero on my hours, turn my minutes into one, seconds and frames zero. I'm gonna hit okay, and it turns my two hour long video clip into a minute long time lapse. Underneath duration is the checkbox to reverse your clip if you want to. You can maintain the audio pitch, which I find Premiere Pro does a pretty good job within reason if you're close enough to the original speed. One quick tip to add on to this idea of audio pitch. Instead of just thinking about switching the duration or speed of your visual clips, think about your sound effects as well. For example, I use this on whooshes and impacts all the time. Here's one. Drop a comment below. For that example, every single time a word hit the screen, I use the same exact sound effect. But what I like to do is actually vary the duration of each time a word hits the screen. So it sounds a little something like this. Drop a comment below. 
Now, every single time the word hit, I change the speed of the sound effect. Which one do you think sounds a little bit better? In my opinion, it's the second one, but could you drop me a comment below on which one you thought was better? Ripple edit trailing clips just means that whatever you do to the clip that you're working on, if you were to make it longer or shorter, all of the clips behind it will then move along with that expansion or contraction. Now, if you don't select this and you make the clip longer, all it will do is just make it long up until the next clip in the edit. Next in time interpolation, you have the options of frame sampling, frame blending, and optical flow. Time interpolation is the way that Premiere is going to interpret the footage if you were to stretch something out beyond the frame frames that you have available. For example, if you wanted to slow something down that was shot at 24 frames per second, but you wanted to play it back at 50%, what is Premiere Pro gonna do with those extra frames in between? Well, it's either going to use frame sampling, which is just duplicating frames in between the frames that it does have available. With frame blending, just imagine Premiere Pro adding crossfades in between each frame to fill those gaps. And then with optical flow, Premiere Pro is going to artificially create new frames where they're needed. And it's going to make its best guesses as to what those frames would look like, judging by the neighboring frames that it does have available to it. In some cases, optical flow does an amazing job, and in other cases, optical flow will look like a computer glitch. And I should point out that if you plan on using optical flow or frame blending, you're gonna need to render out those clips on the timeline before you see the actual effects taking place. If you don't do that, it's just gonna look like normal frame sampling slow-mo until you actually export your project. If you wanna do a freeze frame, Highlight the clip that you want to work on, move the playhead to wherever you want the freeze frame to start, right click, and go to Insert Frame Hold Segment. This will add a freeze frame in between your clip. The easiest way to make this longer or shorter is to take your cursor and move over to the side and hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows to bring up your modified cursor, which is the Ripple Edit tool, click and drag, and this will ripple shift all of the clips after it, forwards or backwards, depending on how you move the cursor. Now let's get into finessing a kind of edit like this with speed ramping. If you wanted to speed ramp something like this shot in Premiere Pro, there's a couple ways of doing it. Let's say I wanted to start out at the normal speed and right here I could just create a cut, which is add edit in Premiere Pro, bring up my clip speed duration and maybe I'll go to 20% and then it will abruptly cut from 100% to slow-mo, 20%. So, boom, which is kind of cool regardless. and Let's say I wanted to go back to 100%. Yay. Another way that you can speed up or slow down the clip is the rate stretch tool, which is found on your toolbar by clicking and holding where the ripple edit tool is right here and going to the rate stretch tool. This literally just stretches the clip to however you move it on the timeline. So right here, it's made at 51%. So now this clip is being played back at 51%. If I wanted to go slower, I could stretch it even more. 29%. I find this tool really nice if you are trying to hit a specific music edit in between two beats and you just stretch the clip to wherever you need it to hit if you have the frames available to you. Then obviously there is the concept of speed ramping, which is the gradual shift in speed from maybe 100% to 20% slow-mo or vice versa. In order to do this in Premiere Pro, you go to the little effects box right here, right click, time remapping speed, and let's say I wanted to slow down right here. I hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows. That creates a little bracket right here. And I extend those brackets. On this side of the bracket, I'm gonna go down to 20% for that slow-mo. And now, in this in-between spot, it's going to gradually slow down to 20%. So, if you wanna make it a non-linear change and make it logarithmic, so it goes like a curve, you just take those handles and move them like such. So on the back end, I can hit command again or control on windows, create another bracketed spot and now raise it back up to 100%. Use those brackets, maybe adjust it a little bit. So now it looks like this. 
your speed back up. And if you remember back earlier in the video, I said I was gonna talk about interpreting footage, which is another way to modify your clips to automatically convert them to slow-mo, which is kind of different than the whole percentage thing that I was showing you. So let me showcase that to you right now. The sequence that I'm working with is 23.976 frames per second. And all of the footage that I wanna put into this sequence to convert to slow-mo isn't 23.976, it's at a higher frame rate. We have 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and 120 frames per second. I mean, give or take some decimal points, but I hope you get the point. So in order to interpret this footage to slow motion at 23.976 frames per second, all we have to do is highlight the clips that we want to convert, right click, go to modify, interpret footage. Under interpret footage, we're going to want to click assume this frame rate and type in the frame rate of your sequence. So if you're editing your sequence at 30 frames per second, put 30 frames per second here. But I'm editing my sequence at 23.976, so I'll put in 23.976 for my frame rate. Hit OK. After you've done that, if you notice in the frame rate right here, it's changed it to 23.976. And now all of your clips are seen as slow motion automatically on the timeline. The only catch here with interpreted footage is that you don't want to go to speed and duration and then try and slow it down more to like 20% like I was doing earlier in the video because it's gonna look like this. It'll look like super, super slow motion. You're trying to slow down slow motion. So keep in mind that with interpreted footage, everything's already in slow motion, which may have you asking the question if you wanted to do something like speed ramping or maybe play a part of the clip back at normal motion, what percentage would you need to go back to in order to have it be normal motion. Well, if you remember that slow-mo percentage cheat sheet that I talked about, I actually cover all of those percentages. So if you wanted to play back something that was at 120 frames per second at normal speed, but it was interpreted, you would have to go up to 500%. But again, I cover all of that information in the PDF. Now that you know how to do all those awesome speed ramping techniques inside Premiere Pro, you can do something like this. While I have you here, did you know that I have my own smooth object animation preset pack? In fact, I used a lot of those presets in the video that you're watching right now. If you're interested, it's in the description below. And if not, hey, I hope you learned something in this video. And if you did, well, share it out with somebody else. Until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.